Getting to event eight or nine in IELTS reading is totally possible. Thousands of our students who watched these free reading videos on YouTube already have. And in this super comprehensive video, I'll help you solve two fundamental problems of IELTS reading. The first is time, or to be more precise, the lack of it. I'll show you how to locate the answers in the long passages quickly. The second, answering questions correctly. We'll look at the trickiest tasks frequently used in recent exams and how to solve them. But before you can win the game, you need to know the rules. So here is how the reading section is structured and scored. This test lasts for 60 minutes and consists of 40 questions divided into three sections. In IELTS Academic, you have one long passage per section. In general training, you might have two or even three shorter texts in sections one and two and a longer text in section three. If you're taking IELTS Academic test, the passages are more academic. You may read about archaeology, biology, or, if you're particularly lucky, genetics. In IELTS general training, the content is much more practical. How to choose a rice cooker or repair a roof. When it comes to scoring the test, the questions in general training are a little bit easier and you need to answer more questions correctly to achieve the same score. For example, to get a band 7, you need 30 correct answers in IELTS Academic, but 34 in general training. For a band 8, it's 35 versus 38. Although there are some differences between the academic and general training reading tests, this video applies to both. And one of the biggest problems in IELTS reading is the same for both – time. How to finish all 40 questions before your time runs out. So let me show you how to locate your answers more quickly. We'll discuss the 15-20-25 rule when to follow it and when not to, whether you should read your passage first or not, and how knowing the order of your questions can become one of your biggest time savers. When you open your reading test, the instructions say you should spend about 20 minutes on the first section, 20 on the second and 20 on the third. But it doesn't work. The first section in IELTS reading is the easiest, the third is the hardest. The vocabulary and the level of understanding required increase from section to section, meaning that the third section requires more time. So if you spend 20 minutes on the first section, you won't have enough time to finish the third. That's why I suggest spending about 15 minutes on the first section. Don't get too comfortable, just try to finish it as quickly as you can without compromising your accuracy. Then spend about 20 minutes on the second and 25 on the third. If you're more advanced and you're aiming for a band 8 or 9, check if you can go through the test even more quickly. Probably only 12 minutes on the first section, 18 on the second and 23 on the third. This will leave you about 7 minutes to go back to any questions you couldn't answer right away. Yes, when working through your test for the first time, don't spend too much time on any single question. If you can't answer one, move on. Finish all the questions and then come back to those you skipped if you still have time. This gives you the best chance to get all the points you can get no matter which section they are in, one or three. The next question is to read or not to read the whole passage before you start answering your questions. There are two strategies. The first is to read the entire passage first and only then start looking at your questions. The second is to go straight to the questions. Which is better? Well, reading the passage first can give you context for the questions, but it takes time. And later, you will still have to go back to the text to find your answers. 
I think it's worth it if your English is quite advanced and you can easily skim read the passage in about three or four minutes. If reading takes longer or feels like you're just getting overwhelmed, start with the questions instead. Some Band 8 or 9 students don't read the passage first and still get the score. I personally don't read it and get my 9s. Next, I want to show you one important thing about IELTS reading and it's particularly important for academic reading where the passages are so long. Not every sentence, or sometimes even every paragraph, contains an answer. Have a look at this paragraph. I've highlighted all the sentences we really need to answer all the questions. So there are three sets of questions. The first set is in blue, the second is in yellow with the keywords or the surnames in orange, and the third is green. The rest is there to provide context. When answering a question, your first task is to locate the highlighted part that contains an answer and do this as quickly as possible. You particularly want to avoid going back and forth searching for your answer and wasting time. And I know a strategy that can help with this. This is the one I referred to earlier as the biggest time saver. Questions that come in order and questions that don't. What you need to know is which question types follow the order of the passage and which don't. Here is what it means. Answers to many questions appear in the text in the same order as the questions. So you can read the first question, start quickly reading the passage until you feel you're reading the part that answers that question. Then you slow down, read the question again, find your answer in the passage. Then you read the next question and continue quickly reading the passage. The idea is to move quickly through the text to locate your answers so you don't spend too much time on the sentences or paragraphs that are not highlighted and to slow down to understand what the answer is. Now, let me show you which questions come in order and which don't and what you should do with them. Some of the most common question types follow the order of the passage, with one important exception we're going to talk about later. Questions that come in order are true, false, not given. Here you need to say if a statement is true or false, or maybe the answer is not given. Yes, no, not given. Say if someone's opinion is the same as in the statement or not. Multiple choice questions with one answer. So each question has four options and one answer. Or multiple choice questions with two answers. In this case, we have five options and two are correct. Matching sentence endings. Complete each sentence with the correct ending from the box below. Then there is a big group of questions called missing words or filling the gaps. The task is choose one word only from the passage for each answer. Occasionally you need to choose two words but usually just one. And you may find it in the form of notes like this one, a table, diagram or summary. In case of a summary, you may need to select options from the box rather than the text. The official ITP guidance says that these answers don't necessarily come in order, but they're usually from the same section of the passage. In my experience, most of them are still in order, though occasionally they may be swapped around. With these questions, we read the question first and then look for the answer. So we start with the questions. On the other hand, there are question types that don't follow the passage order and require a different approach. These include most matching tasks, such as matching headings. Choose the correct heading for each paragraph. Here, you need to understand the general idea of each paragraph or matching information which section contains the following information. So in this case, we're looking for particular details. 
matching features. Match each statement with the correct option from the box below. And one more group of questions I'll touch on in a second. To solve these questions, you should start with the text. Read the first paragraph or section, then match it to your list of options. Then read the next paragraph, try to match it, and so on. This is a neat table, but rules wouldn't be rules if we didn't have exceptions. Questions that don't obey these rules. And in our case, these are questions near the end of the reading test. If you have two or three questions of a different type, numbered 38 to 40 or 39 to 40, those may not be in order. For example, if you have yes, no, not given questions at the very end, they may not be in order even though this question type usually is. So be prepared for this possibility. Knowing which question types follow the order of the passage and which don't can save you a lot of time locating those answers in the passage. But this is just the first step. The next step is understanding which option is correct. But before we dive into that, there are a few small things that can save you time. When working through the passage, you should highlight keywords such as names of people, locations, scientific theories or dates. You may need to find them later. In IELTS on computer, you can right-click to highlight them. On paper, just underline them. If you take your test on paper, you should also transfer your answers to the answer sheet after each section, just to make sure you don't run out of time at the end. And use the official practice tests. I recommend using Cambridge English tests. Unofficial tests may be easier or more difficult, different or simply incorrect. Next. Learn strategies for answering different types of IELTS reading questions. This can save time and also help choose the correct option for each question. And that's exactly what you'll learn next. There are a lot of question types in IELTS reading, between 11 and 14, depending on how you count. But we're going to learn about the four tricky question types that are very frequently used today. To identify which question types are more common, I asked our students who took their exams recently and also used the latest official practice tests. One of the things I found that quite surprised me was that at one time the matching headings task was super common, and I think this is the most difficult question type. But today its little sister matching information or paragraphs seems to be used much more, so that's a great place to start. And then we look into true, false, not given, yes, no, not given, a multiple choice and matching features. Today we'll look at the strategies, but if you'd like to practice too and want to prepare for all the sections of your exam step by step, download my free IELTS study plan, I'll link it in the description. Matching information. Every test in the latest set of official practice tests included this type of task. The instructions read which section contains the following information. And we have a set of statements below. Now, this type of question might remind you of matching headings, but there is a crucial difference between them. In matching headings, you need to find the main idea of each paragraph. With matching information, you are asked to find specific details within those sections, so it's more about scanning for certain information. Our goal is to find answers quickly without getting lost in those passages and going back and forth. So here is how I would do it. Matching information questions in IELTS Academic always come right at the beginning of passage 2. So first of all, read the passage title. Then check for this note. You may use any letter more than once. This is important. 
Usually in practice, this means that one section contains two answers, but in your specific test, it may be different. Then carefully read all the statements that you need to match. Highlight keywords in them. That will help you concentrate on what you're looking for, but don't look for the same words. Look for the meaning because words are usually paraphrased. Then read the first section. Check if any of the questions, any of the statements match the information. Remember, not all sections contain an answer. So if you can't see any, move on and read the next section. And if you miss some answers the first time round, it's okay. Go through your passage and then try to find answers to those statements you couldn't match the first time round. But if you still can't, just move on to other questions. You may still find this information and answer them later. The next types of questions every test has are true, false, not given and yes, no, not given. They look very similar, but there is a difference. Let me show you. In true, false, not given questions, we're dealing with facts. For example, there are 30 students in the class. This is a fact. The fact can be correct, true or incorrect, false. In yes, no, not given questions, the text is usually about the opinion of the author. Uh, let's say there should be not more than 30 students in each class. Is it a fact? No, it's just someone's opinion. And so we answer yes if the statement agrees with the author's opinion in the text and no if it disagrees. A common difficulty with these questions is when you start thinking, but the meaning is not exactly the same, it's slightly different. Does it mean the answer is false or no? My advice is don't overthink it. Ask yourself, is the meaning close enough or is it completely different? If it's close, the answer is true or yes. If there is a very clear contradiction, it's false or no. What is not given? That's when you can't say if it's true or false, yes or no. For example, if the statement, our question is, there are more boys than girls. And in the text we read, there are 30 students in the class. We can't really say if there are indeed more boys or more girls, right? We don't know. The answer is not given. Similarly with yes, no questions. If our statement, our question is, the teacher should spend time with each student. And in the passage, we see there should be not more than 30 students in each class. The answer is not given. How to solve these questions? First, we need to locate your answer. Remember, answers come in the same order as questions. So read the first question, start looking for your answer. Highlight keywords in the question, in the statement, to see what you're looking for. And concentrate on the meaning, not on the exact words, because words will be paraphrased. Look for names and dates, so those will be repeated in the passage. Once you locate the information in the text, the next step is to select the correct answer. The level of difficulty of each question depends on where in the text you find it. If the question is in the first section, the answer is probably in a single sentence. In the second section, you may need to read two sentences. In the third, you may need to read the whole paragraph because the questions are the hardest. And remember that the devil is in the details. So take it slowly, read everything and don't let your brain jump to conclusions. Next, multiple choice questions. There are two types of them, with one answer and with two answers, and there are some differences. So multiple choice questions with one answer. Here you'll be given several questions, each with four options and one correct answer. 
it may feel like several of those options all match. So how do you find the correct one? Well, first of all, carefully read the question. Then find the paragraph that contains the answer and read it. Some of these questions tell you exactly where the answer is. For example, the answer to question 27 will be in the first paragraph, question 29 in the fourth. Instead of paragraph numbers, you may have keywords, like in 28. Richard Dawkins book, The Selfish Gene. If you underline the keywords when you read the passage, you'll see exactly where this book is discussed. But there is another clue. We know that multiple choice questions with one answer come in order. This means that if question 27 is in the first paragraph and 29 is in the fourth, question 28 is in the second or third. Next, assess each option and find the answer. One of the main difficulties is that all or at least several options will be discussed in the passage, but only one is correct. So compare each option to the information in the passage. Look for synonyms, as correct answers are usually paraphrased. Cross out incorrect options and consider all the options before you choose your answer, as sometimes the correct answer may not be the first one that comes to mind. Okay, there is a more difficult variety of multiple choice questions, those with two answers. Choose two letters. These questions have five options and two correct answers each. The general approach to solving them is the same as in the questions with one answer, but there is one important difference. In multiple choice questions with two answers, options may be discussed in one or several paragraphs. Let me show you. Questions 25-26. Which two facts about anxiety are mentioned in paragraph E? So we know where to look in paragraph E. But what about this one? Which two of the following statements does the writer make about the discoveries of Barnett's team? You may think the keywords Barnett's team. But in this particular case, it won't work. Here is the passage. The Barnett's team is discussed all over it. No help at all. I've read it and highlighted where our options are discussed, mainly in several paragraphs in the middle, D, E and F, and in pink you see Opland, which is a keyword from one of the options. A lot to read. One good thing is that these questions are usually at the very end of section 2, so you're expected to have read the whole passage by the time you get to the question. So hopefully you know where to look for your answer. In any case, multiple choice questions with two answers may require a lot of time. If you can't find answers quickly, finish all the other questions in your test and then return to these questions. I'm afraid there is no shortcut here. But the next question type has a really useful trick and it's becoming increasingly common too. Matching features. Here you need to match a set of statements 19, 20, 21 to a list of options in the box A, B, C. These may be names of researchers, or in general training, a list of professions or a list of hobbies. First of all, check if you may use any letter more than once. If yes, you most likely will. Questions are not in order, so we can't look for an answer to the first statement. Instead, carefully read all the statements and highlight keywords. Try to remember the gist or the main topic of each statement. Now, here is the useful trick. Scan the passage for options in the box. With other question types, I prefer quickly reading the passage instead of just scanning it looking for a particular word. But I find that with matching features, it usually works quite well and you can just scan. And it saves time. 
when you find one option mentioned, slow down, carefully read the information related to this option, and then check if it answers any of the questions, if it matches to any of the statements. Sometimes you may find an option from the box, but it doesn't match with any statements. Then continue scanning for the next option. These are the four common and tricky types of tasks used in IELTS reading today. But in IELTS, there are other tricky tasks. And for more in-depth IELTS preparation for each section of the test, you can download my free IELTS study plan and follow the steps. It's linked in the description. For reading preparation, you can also follow this playlist. All the videos on individual tasks have highly useful practice inside. And thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye!